Diana J. Brody here from Next Level Editing Academy, and today we're going to be talking about the adjustment layer in Premiere versus putting effects on a blank layer in Avid. All right, things work differently in both worlds, but yet they're both similar. Very close. Let's start with Premiere. We're going to do an adjustment layer. I'm going to do an adjustment layer for one thing. I'm not going to get into a big tutorial about adjustment layers. There's plenty of those out on YouTube. I may do one uh, at some point in time, but for right now, I just want to show you how you accomplish an adjustment layer in Premiere as opposed to Avid in Avid they don't call it an adjustment layer. So let's start with Premiere. Let's say for the sake of argument, I've got this scene between my cousins, right? This is my, this is my cousins pretending to be Seinfeld. And let's say I wanted to, uh, I wanted to make all of these clips straight across. I wanted to make them a very specific color. Let's say I want to color this scene. I want to do a Soderbergh thing. You know how Soderbergh always has like, Mexico was orange, and then across the border was blue. And then you know how he has those. So let's say we wanted to kind of mimic that, right? So let's come over here and we're going to make an adjustment layer. I've got a bin right here. This bin happens to be called graphics and titles. I already have an adjustment layer, but let's start fresh with a new one because I don't know what I've done to that adjustment layer. If I've saved it out, I may have. Uh, so there's lots of cool things you can do with an adjustment layer. We're just going to do one thing right now just to show you, just to demonstrate. So I'm going to right click in the empty space of this bin and I'm going to go down to new item and I'm going to choose adjustment layer. Boom. There it is. It's going to come in at the frame rate and the video settings that my project's in. And I'm gonna click OK. Here's my new adjustment layer. And then uh, uh, you can load it in and edit it in, right? Like that. Or you can do what most people do, right? If I wanted to edit it in, here's my in and out. I'm gonna put V1 on, you know, patch it to V2. And I'm gonna hit overwrite, because that is my way. But, and then it's exactly where I wanted to go. But most people do it this way. They come over here to their bin, they drag it into their timeline like a barbarian, and then they drag out the end so that it's covering all the clips that they want to color. So, or that they want to affect. Right? So if I wanted to do a slow grow, uh, I could do a slow push in uh, on these. I probably wouldn't do it with an adjustment layer. If I wanted to do a slow push in, I'd probably just click on all of these and then right click and say nest. And then I would, I would keyframe that up in the um, effect control panel. But um, for an adjustment layer, I would mostly use it for like if I wanted to color a whole thing or I wanted to put any kind of effect on the whole thing. So here's my adjustment layer. I'm gonna come over here to my effects bin. What did I do with my effects bin? Let's go to Windows and grab our effects bin. Here's the effects bin. Ah, oh, I tabbed it right up there. Now, I've got this Lumetri color down here. I'm gonna go to my effect controls over here, which if you don't, if you don't have it tabbed in, uh, and I can close actually close this bin now, uh, so if you don't have it tabbed in up here like I do, come over here to Window and go down to Effect Controls. And then here's my Lumetri color. Now let's say I'll go to, uh, let's go to uh, Tint. You can do this with the color picker, right, too. But let's tint it. Let's saturate it. Let's change the color temperature. Oh, yeah, there you go. Oh, that's the color we want. Oh, that looks great. It's like a nuclear, it's like nuclear summer. So delightful. And so now you can see because of this adjustment layer, we have colored all of these three things straight across, right? You can do this with a number of effects. You can actually take the adjustment layer and make it shorter, right? And using keyframes and effects, you could put a glitch effect on it, go from zero to glitch to zero. Uh, keyframe it right and you see it's right on the cut and you can create some cool transitions that way there's a lot of cool things you can do with an adjustment layer and uh, and let's say you're like okay I want to use that here uh, across these let's say I've got this here I want to stack another effect on it I can go to my effects panel 
and I can say, you know, we can go to video effects and let's say I also wanted to blur it. Then we can take a Gaussian blur. We just drop it right on there. So now we've got two effects on there. Uh, I click on my adjustment layer. I go back to effect controls. Now we see there was my Lumetri. Here's my Gaussian. I can bring up the blurriness. And there you go. And now it's both blurry and orange straight across. Why would you want to do it? I don't know. Maybe you're crazy, but who knows? You might want to do that sometime. And that looks great. Let's say you're going to put something over that and it's going to look awesome. But that's how you use, that's how you layer effects across multiple clips without having to write, go ahead and, and drop Gaussian blur on one clip, adjust it on one clip, command C to copy. Uh, I do option, uh, I do um, F6 because I've mapped paste attributes to F6. So I hit F6 and then I can, uh, and then I can paste that across, right? I can also shift here. Let me remove my ins and outs. I can shift click these on. I can paste attributes on those all at once, once I've adjusted one. But if you know you wanna do the same thing to multiple clips straight across, adjustment layer is your way to go. Now, things work differently in Avid. Meet me on the other side. Okay, here we are on the Avid side. In the Avid side, you do not use an adjustment layer because Avid sees the blank spaces of your timeline uh, as actual spaces that you can use and do stuff to. So instead of having to create an adjustment layer, drag the adjustment layer down, you can just put, oops, you can just put an effect on this blank layer. So notice how, B, how V2, which I've labeled B-roll here, uh, is completely blank. Well, if I wanted to, let's say I've got all three of these clips and let's say I want all three of these clips to grow together, like to do a nice slow push in across all three, uh, all four, sorry, of these clips. I don't want to have to do uh, three different, four different effects uh, for each one of those, right? In order to make them grow, I want them to grow evenly over time. Keep pushing in, keep pushing in. Uh, so that I only want to do one effect and have it affect all of these. Instead of doing an adjustment layer, we're going to come up to tools, go down to our effects palette. And if you remember from the other video, my favorite effect is what? Under blend, it's 3D warp. Let's do it. I'm going to grab 3D warp and watch. I'm going to put it on this blank layer. Notice it says filler right here. It lets you know that it's not on top of any clip whatsoever. It's over top an empty layer. You can just put it there. It then turns into your adjustment layer, right? So you could then open up your effects palette, right? Instead of going to the motion tab, you would open up your effects palette. And then you would come in here and I would set, I would come over here and I would set a keyframe, add to all parameters. I would go over to the end and I would set a keyframe, add to all parameters. And then I would say, let's scale this up to 300 to 300%. Now watch, if I scroll through, you see how it's all evenly moving in like that. Oh, it looks great, especially this. Oh, that's my neighbor, Denny. He will love that. So anyway, uh, so you can do that, right? But now, look, now I've got this adjustment. I've got an adjustment layer, right? Just by putting this on an empty layer. But let's say I was like, you know what I also want to do is I want to put a color effect on it. Usually color effects I, I would like to put on the bottom layer, but it doesn't really matter. You can put it on any layer. Let's go back to our effect palette and, um, and let's go to image. And I'm just going to grab out color correction from right here or not color correction, I'm sorry, color effect from right here. You can do color correction, you can totally do that as well. That's just another whole nother kettle of fish. So let's say I wanna drop it on top of here. If I just drop it, it's now deleted that effect that I've already put on it. So if I come over here and do color effect and I hold down option or alt, I believe if you're on a PC and drop it, now it retains that, that, uh, that push in, sorry. I was in my effects editor still. Now it retains the push in while still adding this effect on top. And you can keep doing it. You can keep option dropping or alt dropping 
keep doing it with any effects that you want to put in it, right? Or put on it rather. But now I'll go into my effect editor and let's go ahead and let's make that hue like that. And we'll take the saturation all the way up. Oh, that's fantastic. Let's posterize that. Uh, you know what? Instead of posterize, let's posterize it a little, but then let's solarize it. Oh, that is outstanding. Now look. Oh, yes, that is great. That is everything you want it to be and more. Uh, so that's how you do that, right? Now, if I want to get rid of this effect, let's say we're like, I don't want it. I can just go up here to remove effect or I've, of course, mapped it to my keyboard so that on the on the. Um, uh, add dissolve if I do shift that it will remove effects so I can remove that effect or right I can go into my effect palette and I can save this effect out and I can put it in a bin somewhere and use it again if I wanted to because who wouldn't want to use this effect again or I could come follow the bouncing ball all the way down here and I could step in now I've stepped in now I can open up my effect editor right? And just adjust that because in the motion tab on, uh, on, uh, on the effects tab rather in, um, premiere, you can see all your effects stacked up, right? They're just stacked up so you can see them. Uh, but here is a way you can step into your effects or look on my, on my, uh, on my effect editor, I've got both the effects that are layered on top and I can click into one and adjust it. I can click into the other and adjust that just like that, right? So I can go in and let's say I was like, oh, you know what? I want this to actually be at 400 instead. So now I've fixed that without affecting my color effect, which is right there. And if I wanna go into my color effect and say, you know what, all the way at the end, I would also like to bring the contrast up. So now I'm affecting that, close that. Now I've got, I can see my two effects. That will show you all your effects stacked down the line, just like it will in the effect uh, tab in Premiere. Uh, the, little, the, little, the little panel in Premiere where you can, uh, your effect controls, sorry, brain freeze. So just like your effect controls, that is the effect editor in Avid. It works the same. It's just not a window. If you want it to be a window and it disturbs you that it's free floating, you can come over here and you could hold down option and you can tab it right here. Here's my effect palette. Here's my effect editor. The problem with that is right when you're done the effect editor, you need to click out because if you don't, everything I click will think it wants to be active and think that I want to do some kind of uh, edit effect to it. So you need to click out of your effect editor after you're done. You always want to click out of your effect editor, but gosh, isn't that beautiful? I can't understand why that's not broadcast ready, but there you go. That's the difference. You can put it on in an empty layer, right? So, uh, and the same, and I could stack in this empty layer on top. Uh, I can come back up here to, to tools, go back down to my effect palette. I could come over here and let's say, um, let's say I wanted to put, um, I wanted to put some kind of, you know, film effect on there. I want to put a mask. Let's look at our illusion effects. Let's say I wanted to put a flare on there. I can go here, drag it to that empty layer. Now it's affecting that. And then, so instead of stacking it, uh, uh, option dropping it, I can put yet another effect on another layer. I like to option drop them so that they nest in on the same clip and it, freeze up my real estate, but you may find there's a reason where you don't want to nest it on top and you want to put it on yet another layer. And you can just keep doing that up and up and up in every blank layer. You can put another effect if you wanted, but that's, uh, that's the best way to affect a whole bunch of clips at one time, especially in Avid where you cannot copy and paste attributes from one clip to the other. You can't do it. It's not possible. I wish it were possible, but you can't do it. They don't have that. So if you know you want to affect a bunch of clips with the same effect and they're all right in a row, go ahead and put it on a blank layer and use that as an adjustment layer, working with your effect editor as if it were the effect control tab. And that is how you do it in Avid. I hope you've liked this. I hope it's helped you. Let me know if it's helped you at all, or if you're like, eh, meh, I want to know. Either way, even if you're completely nonplussed about it, 
drop a drop a comment for me. I read them all, and I hope you have a beautiful day. Hey, if you're finally ready to master Avid and double your job and income opportunities, I've got a class for that. Click the link below in the description and use the coupon code YouTube24 to get 15% off on this course. Let's demystify Avid together. Thank <laughs> you.